This is lesson three of unit eight. In this lesson, we'll talk about empirical formulas. And an empirical formula is the simplest type of formula showing the ratio of atoms in a compound, showing you how many uh, lead, for example, for how many oxygen. Now, the word empirical actually means determined from experiment experimental data so this word means from experiment so we will take numbers from experiment and then use those numbers to determine the empirical formula of the compound and very often this is taken from the percent composition data from lab so for example you would find a compound that has 13.3 percent lead and 86.62 percent oxygen and from these percentages you would determine you would work back and find the formula. So this is what we're going to show you, how to take it from the percent into the formula. Now, we actually went backwards in the previous session. We showed you how to go from the formula to the percents by doing percent composition calculations. And now we're going the other way. We're going to go this way from the percents to the formula. Now, in order to do this, we're going to follow this four-step poem and the four steps are, the four lines of the, of the poem are the four steps that we'll have to use in order to determine the formula. So here's the uh, poem. First, we do what's called percent to mass. That's going to be step one. Then we'll do mass to mole. Then we'll divide by small and then multiply till whole. And I'll show you how each one of these steps will be used in order to determine the empirical formula. Okay, so we're actually going to do an example. In this example, will use all four of these steps. The example is the following. A compound consists of 82.56% carbon and 17.38% hydrogen. Find its empirical formula. So let's apply the four steps of the poem to this problem. So step number one said percent to mass. And this is the easiest step of all. Essentially what you do is you take your percentages and convert them into grams. And the reason you do this is because you're assuming that you have 100 grams of the compound. If you have 100 grams of the sample, and if 82% of it is carbon, then you have 82 grams of carbon. Easy as that. So we'll put 82, and actually let's uh, just, so this is clear, that's not part of the problem. Let's do, uh, this will be step one. We'll do 82.56 grams of carbon, and we'll do 17.38 grams of hydrogen. So step one is complete. We can put step one up here. Why don't we do it like this, step one. Step two says mass to mole, and this is exactly what it sounds like. We would convert each of these masses to moles. So remember the way we convert from mass to mole is we multiply by a conversion factor. The grams will go on the bottom. This is grams of carbon. And moles goes on top. The number with the moles is one. And the number with the grams is the mass for that element from the periodic table. Remember, these are called the molar masses. So for hydrogen, if we take a look at hydrogen, hydrogen weighs 1.01 grams on the periodic table in a mole. Again, these are, here's carbon, 12.01. These are the molar masses that we're looking at. Molar mass. And once you do these calculations, Let's go ahead and grab your calculator and do these calculations with me. So we do 82.5 or 82.56 times 1 divided by 12.01 and that should give us 6.874 moles of carbon. In the case of hydrogen, do 17.38 divided by 1.01 that should give you 17.21 mole of hydrogen. So this would be step two. Let's go ahead and make this in red. This is step two. This was step one. Step three says divide by small. Now this step is actually also pretty simple. What you do is you divide both of these numbers by the smallest one. If you had three numbers, you divide all three by the smallest one. So you'll divide this and this by the smaller one, which is 6.87. So this becomes 6.874, and this is 6.874. Now what this does is this makes the smaller one into a 1. So when you divide these two numbers together, you'll get 1 mole of carbon. 
and then it makes the other one a ratio in terms of that one. It tells you how many you have for each one of the carbon. So when you divide 17.21 by 6.874, go ahead and do this in your calculator. So we'll do 17.21 over 6.874, and you'll get 2.5 moles of hydrogen. So this would be step to be divided by small. The last step is actually multiply to the whole. And what this means is you would multiply both of these numbers by some kind of number until both of these become whole numbers. The idea here is this. We have a compound made of carbon and hydrogen. And this compound has both hydrogen and carbon in it. It looks like this. Carbon, hydrogen. What we're looking for are the subscripts, these numbers. How many carbons for how many hydrogens? Now, we have a mole of carbon and two and a half moles of hydrogen. We can't ever put half numbers in here. That's not allowed. You can put one, you can put a three in here, but you can never put half numbers. So we have to multiply these two numbers by some sort of number to make them into whole numbers. And if you double both of these, two and a half times two gives you five. So uh, if it's a half, double it. So why don't we multiply both these by two? And that will gives us, give us two moles of carbon, and it'll give us five moles of hydrogen. So you decide to multiply by some whole number, by two, by three, by four, until you get to whole numbers at the end. Once you've done that, this is actually your ratio that goes in here. So inside your compound would actually go a two for the carbon and a five for the hydrogen. So C2H5 would be the empirical formula. And really, you, you usually have to take these numbers and put them into the empirical formula. So C2H5, then, is the answer. Okay? So let's quickly, this is step four, by the way. Let's quickly review what we've done here. First of all, we took the percentages, and we made them into grams. That was really easy. Just rewrite the number, make it into grams. Second of all, we converted them into moles by setting up the conversion factor to put grams from the track table on the bottom one mole on top. Notice for both of them, grams on the bottom, one mole on top. We found those numbers. Thirdly, we divided both of these by the smallest of the two. This was the smallest one, so we divided both of them by the smallest. That made this one into a one. It made this one into a two and a half. And then lastly, we decided to multiply both of these by some number that will give them whole numbers, that will get them two whole numbers. Because in your formula, you can never have half numbers. In fact, if you find someone has written a half number into a formula, I would recommend running away or just just stop talking to them. Uh, ha, you know, and this would be a consequence of improper chemical calculations. And so, real quick, what if at this point we didn't have one and two and a half? What if we had, uh, let's do a few examples of, what if we had one mole of carbon and 1.3 moles of hydrogen. What would you do, multiply these two by? Well, 1.3 is a third, so you would multiply these by 3. What if you had 1.25, let's do, what if you had 1.25 moles of hydrogen? 1.25 is a quarter, you would multiply by 4. If you had 1.2, multiply by 5. And usually these are the four possibilities. 2.5 or 1.5, 1 1.3, 1.25, 1.2. Beyond this, it's usually, uh, that, that's all you see. Okay, so think about this. Um, we're going to do another lesson that practices one more time, and then we'll have you do an example problem on your own. So this completes for us lesson three of unit eight.